Okay, so this is our home screen. Illustrator is mostly created for um, design, uh, for, for vector-based image design. And uh, our Daily Delish on Monday will be about vector versus raster images. Um, but the most basic difference is that uh, vector images is ma are made up of uh, of different anchor points, and so they're ma it's mathematically created and they're endlessly scalable, meaning you can make vector images as big or as small as you want and they will never get pixelated. They're never going to lose resolution. Raster images, such as like JPEGs, photographs, will lose resolution. So we all know if you zoom way in on a photograph, you're going to see pixels. And because rasters are raster, rasterized images are made up of pixels. But I'll show you a video on Monday that will clarify that a little bit more. Anyway, that's the big difference. So um, Adobe Illustrator is like the industry standard in um, vector creation. Um, it is super complex, um, but it's also like you can just make you can make really complicated stuff with it. But you can also make really simple stuff with it. We're going to mostly make simple things. Um, and anyway, so here we go. So this is our homepage. This is where we start making our documents. Um, and a document is basically what you call your pieces of art that you're creating in Adobe Illustrator. There are a couple presets here. So um, you can look at presets like, so here, postcard, a letter, these are like standards that you may want to use if you're designing for an iPhone X or say you're designing for an HDTV, which we're not, definitely not doing that. Um, letter is the size of a regular size piece of paper. So if I click on um, create new, another dialog box opens. I call this dialog box. So everyone should click create new. And the first thing that comes up is your recent items. Oh, that's for me. That's because I created something. You didn't create anything recent. That's fine. Uh, we are not going to, we're going to, I'm going to walk you through this new item box. So you can do saved. We don't have any saved ones. Then there's some other presets. Mobile, if you're going to design for the web, like a banner. If you're going to design for print, a bunch of different sizes, like different poster sizes, different paper sizes, film and video, and art and illustration. You can also just make any size anything that you want. So good habits wise, I really want you guys to start off by always naming your pieces of artwork. So we're going to call this, um, we're going to call this project unit one practice book and then put your initials or your name or SHTV. yeah okay hold on one second Thank you. 
at 4 p.m. and I don't know if I'm gonna be done by like 11 or eleven. All right, so unit one practice book and then your initials. Then when you look down, it will say width and height, and it will probably be in points, but who the heck knows what points are? Well, graphic designers do, but we aren't graphic designers yet. So uh, I like to change this to something I understand. This points, I like to change it to a unit I understand, like inches. So eight and a half by 11 is the standard size for a piece of paper that goes into a printer, so I like to use that size unless I know I'm using bigger paper. We will design some things that are different sized, but for now, for this practice book, we're gonna stick with eight and a half by 11. If you wanted to change the orientation, so there are two orientations you can have, portrait, which is taller than it is wide, or landscape, which is wider than it is tall. And if you click right now, it's in portrait, you can see, but if you click on the landscape, you'll notice that the sizes, or that the length and width or uh, sorry, the width and height automatically flip-flop. So you can flip-flop it back. Artboards, I like to think of as, um, and we'll talk about artboards a million more times, artboards are like pieces of paper on your desk. So right now we have one artboard, and so that's like one piece of paper on your desk. Because we're going to be doing a bunch of different experimenta experimentations or experiments, I, well, I don't know why I added tations to the end of it. Experiments, let's make, we're gonna start off with like, let's give ourselves 12 artboards to start. Bleed, now this is not for our purposes because we aren't uh, really printing many things. But if you were going to be designing, say, um, something that you were printing a lot of, so maybe uh, business cards, you're going to print 900 business cards. And they would print a lot of them at once and then use a huge paper cutter to cut through them. You would want to have a little bit of bleed, meaning you would want the, the, the ink to go off the paper a little bit so that if the cut didn't exactly match, that it, there wouldn't be like a little white strip at the edge. So that's what bleed is, but we don't need bleed. Color mode is CMYK is additive color, meaning it's using ink. So we're gonna keep it on that. RGB color is if you're designing for the web. Whoa, oops. Uh, 300 PPI is good, we're good. Okay, create. Now it's gonna look like you have 12 pieces of paper. Let me know if you do not have that or if you need me to go back. You do not need to do what I'm gonna, about to do right now. I'm just gonna make a swirly across. So, the thing to know about artboards is that I just made that line that goes across a bunch of different artboards. If I were to print this, Anything that's on those gray areas in between the artboards would not print. All that is going to print, even though they look like they're white, it's really just imagine it as like a blank area. So the only thing that would print is the black line that's on the white artboard. If you wanted to have a white background, for example, you would have to pull out a white rectangle. Nothing is going to print that is not on the artboard itself. So that is just a, a trick of the trade. 
a couple, let's go through the top menu. There's not a lot of things that we need to know on that, but um, kids like to get themselves set up in specific ways. So um, if you go to the Illustrator menu, I'm starting right way up at the top. If you go to the Illustrator menu and go to Preferences and go to User Interface, people are very specific about how they like their screens to look. Uh, me included. I only like that dark gray. Actually, I like the black too. I'm going to keep it at black. You can choose any of those. It's pretty much the only thing I wanted to show you in that menu. <laughs> so choose the interface that you like. And press OK. My screen looks a little different from yours. You'll notice that I have like two rows of tools over here. And I also have a bar up at the top. That's because I've been using Illustrator since 2004. And so I'm going to have you set it up like mine so that we can learn it together. And I want you to go to Window, which is also along the top. Go to Workspace. And dang, if TB isn't classic, choose Essentials Classic. And now yours should look like mine. I like Essentials Classic because this top bar gives you details about each tool that you're using. So right now the tool that I have selected is a paintbrush tool, so it tells me what my stroke is, what my fill is, how big it is, what my paintbrush is. I like being able to see that all at once. I'm sure if I started using Illustrator two years ago that I wouldn't care about it, but that is not the case. Window is, the, is another uh, menu, one of the drop-down menus at the top that you'll use a lot. Because if you click on it, you'll see all of the tools that we use, or all of the, the um, yeah, I guess tools. Not really tools. I don't know what the word is. But uh, all of these menus are in here. And if there's a check mark next to it, so for example, I have a check mark next to color, that means that that menu is already open. Oh, look, it's right there. Ha! Huh. If you can't find something that you need, but there's a check mark next to it, just click on it, it'll disappear. Click on it again, it'll reappear, and you can find it. So if you're ever missing something you need, Windows is a great place to go. Oh, where are my brushes? I miss them so much. Oh, click on it, there they are. So that's a great menu to use. The other menus up here on the top, we don't use that much. When we get to typography, which is letter forms and typing and, and words, uh, we'll use type a little bit, but really not that much. Most of the stuff we're going to use is down here in our workspace. So we have, oops, whoa. A lot of tools here. And we aren't going to use all of them in this class, but we're going to use a lot of them. Our home base, or like our main man here, is our selection tool. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a couple um, shortcuts that you're going to use a lot. V, the letter V, is a shortcut that I live at. I live for V. Because V brings you back to the selection tool. There's a lot of toggling in between tools and clicking, having to go back to this menu and click. Now, when you have a mouse, it's a little bit easier. But clicking uh, back on your tool is really annoying. So using the V tool is pretty awesome. The direct selection tool I'm not going to talk about right now. It's better to talk about it once we've made some more shapes. We're going to skip over the next line of tools and the next line and the next line and go to the easiest tool to use but the least effective, which is the paintbrush tool. It looks like a little brush. 
Grab it. We're just going to play around with the brush tool for a minute. Make a line. The paintbrush tool. Make a couple lines. You can make lines on a single artboard. You can make lines that go over a lot of different artboards. If you hold shift when you make a line, what happens? Make a line while holding shift. Exactly, it makes it automatically straight. That is true. So if you want to make a straight line while using the paintbrush, you can hold shift. If you want to make your paintbrush bigger, thicker, does anyone know where the bracket keys are? They're next to P. So the P tool, oh, sorry, the, the bracket keys are going to make your paintbrush thicker or thinner. Open bracket makes it thinner, and close bracket makes it thicker. You can make it real thick. Press the V key and hover over any of your lines. When you click on it, you'll see that the single line will turn, well, maybe it won't turn blue. Whatever color it is, that's the layer that you're on. And you can move that line around. If you want to select multiple lines, you can hold shift and click on other ones. And or you can click and drag. I bet you want to know, how do I change the color of my line? I'll tell you. Another very, very important thing to notice and to pay attention to that's going to probably bug you a couple times this trimester are these two squares at the bottom of our tools. One of them is white with a line, red line through it. That is our fill. That means if you're making a shape or you're making lines, what color is the inner part going to be? What color will the fill be? Right now, the fill is empty. So there's nothing that happens in there. The other line is a black outline. That is our stroke. To change the color of your stroke, you can click on that black outline so that it comes to the front. And up at our tool menu, our in like a specific tool key up at the top, you can click the drop down and choose from there. If you have a line selected, it will move. Uh, sorry, it will change. If you don't have a line selected, your new line is going to be that. Boop, 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 boop. And if you want to get super wild and crazy, you can double click 
and choose even more. We'll talk way more about the color selector when we learn about color probably in two weeks. Maybe next week, I don't know. I'm gonna give you the next five minutes, well, the next four minutes, well, the next five minutes, <laughs> till the end of class to play. And I'll take the last minute to save. Just play around, make lines, don't play on your phones, play on Illustrator. There's no specific thing you need to make. Cool. free reign. Lexi, that sort of looks like um, that sort of looks like Jack. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna save your masterpieces. So go to file, file, save, and you want to save cloud document. Okay, save cloud document and make sure that it's your cloud, save, 
and then you are hot to trot. Save. This weekend, if you remember, you should have Adobe Illustrator available on your um, self-service. So you can get Illustrator, and when you open it on your iPad, you can play with this, this document. You can make new ones at home. It's been real. If there's a charger at your station, make sure that your computer's plugged in, please.